striking skills, dazzling personalities, and even perfection. Yes, she got it! Crystalisa is perfect! Shea Campbell is perfect again! The best teams in the nation and the biggest stars in the sport will take the stage. as they begin the hunt for a Pac-12 championship on the road to Nationals. It all happens right here, right now, and only on the Pac-12 Network. Fresh dusting of snow in the foothills of the Wasatch Front and on the roof for the Huntsman Center side of today's top 25 matchup between the number 25 Washington Gym Dogs and the fourth ranked Red Rocks from the U of U. That's the University of Utah. It's collegiate gymnastics and it's live on the Pac-12 Network. Hi everybody, Jim Watson and Elisa Mallon. Welcome to the Huntsman Center in Salt Lake. I know it's your first time here. Very excited for her to experience this. 12,000 people and two ranked teams. So both teams in the top 25, and it's a conference meet. Same teams on the same floor, but maybe for different reasons. Yeah, Utah has been phenomenal this season on Vault and Beat, but I'm really looking for them to max out their scoring potential and hit bars and floor as well. And then for the Huskies, this is a big stage for them and a good test of their mental preparation. For Utah, they're ranked fourth in the country. They're ranked on everything in the top 12, including Vault, where they're the best in the conference. And big reason for that, of course, is Jaden Rucker. has been through everything in her career. She had an ACL as a, a young gymnast, came back, won the floor championship for the Pac-12, and then last year, the NCAA title on this event, the Vault. She does a Yurchenko one and a half, really challenging Vault, and does it better than anyone else. Last week, she went 9.975, near perfect, I look for her to dominate on that event and also on the floor where she really shows off that athleticism and power. Under second year coach Je Jen Llewellyn, the dogs quickly improving all four event highs have increased since the opener. Big reason for them, Amara Cunningham, Pac-12, specialist of the week. And Amara also excels on the leg events of vault and floor. Last week, a 9.95 on floor gave her the win versus UCLA. She has been such a dynamite for the Huskies on those two events. Washington has a chance to make history by beating the Red Rocks for the first time ever. Utah ranked in the top 15 on all four events. Number four, Utah. Number 25, Washington. Live from Frosty Salt Lake City and only on the Pac-12 Networks. Sprouts Farmer's Market, the official grocer of the Pac-12. And brought to you by Clean Simple Eats, elevating life through food and fitness. And by Watch Sports, the official live event guide of the Pac-12 Conference. Download it today. Another beautiful day in Salt Lake City. They had some snow overnight, a little bit of blue sky outside. Big crowd inside the Huntsman Center, expecting more than 12,000. Why are the Red Rocks so good? Well, go ahead and pick your poison, right? They're top 12 on everything, and they're top three in the conference on everything, including number one in the conference on vault and beam. And beam, they are the best team in collegiate gymnastics. One thing about Tom Farden, the head coach here at the University of Utah for years, it was always beam. That was the bugaboo of this group that would always scuttle their chances in the postseason. And when Farden took over, he said, we are not only going to be good at beam, we're going to be the best at beam. And he paid that off. Utah is number one. They are number four in the national rankings right now. They've already faced Oklahoma. We're going to see UCLA tomorrow in Los Angeles against Oregon State on the network. And, of course, UCLA will host Utah next Friday on ESPN2. You can see that beam. Starting vault lineup, and right from the top, pretty interesting. Well, you got the four 10 0 start values, but Jaylene Gilstrap in the leadoff spot. Never seen it. Making her college debut as a youth on vault. You'll see her do the Yurchenko layout full, worth a 9.95. She'll also see her on floor, but check out the power and her lines on this vault. Also see Jaylene later in the floor, but she was put into this spot because Lucy Stanhope 
Normally the leadoff in this spot, injured. First time ever. There's her layout goal, wow. Really exceptional and, and control. And you can see Carter right there in the background. He knew that was a, a little bit of a gamble, putting somebody new at the top, and it all worked out. She showed great control of this vault from start to finish. I like how her legs were glued together the entire time and just had that small slide, slide back. In the Olympic order, Utah starts on the vault. That means Washington starts on the bars, and that means we will see Dia Moody first. Moody has been bars and beams in all of the meets, just like she was last year, and on bars. 9725 last week against UCLA. Her best this year is a 9775. Looking for more here. Get going. Yeah, I'm looking for Dia to just clean up the little details, keeping her legs together, really hitting the handstands. And she's also yet to stick this dismount. You'll see her do a full twisting double back. Super challenging. We'll see if she can find the landing here. There you go. Just the tiniest hop forward, but a really great start for the Huskies on bars. Washington is the fifth best team in the conference on this event, 23rd in the country. They have hit 49 one time this year, and they average right about 49. On the vault, Utah is averaging 49-4. They've gone as high as 49-5-2-5. That is the fourth best total in the country this year. That happened last week at Oklahoma, and they have Two gymnasts ranked in the top 12, Rucker and Smith. This is Abby Brenner. Abby She'll Brenner, the transfer from Michigan, now all Red Rock. There's her Yurchenko one and a half, worth a 10.0 with the forward landing. She takes a little bit of a hop, probably a tenth, a tenth and a half, depending on how the judges are feeling. Has a really nice entry, but a little bit of a shoulder angle on the table. You want her shoulders to be completely stretched to get the maximum amplitude on that vault. She's got 9.825 or better on all of her vaults this year. She's got 9.875 a couple of times. Modi gets a 9.8 and hands the baton to Taylor Russell. Russell bars in all of the meets this year been on beam once and floor once. Today we will see her on beam as well. Taylor has a very smooth style on bars. She'll do a big really smooth here. The Jaeger needs to connect right to the overshoot. Well done. Another all-important handstand here on the high bar. It's just a little closed, but nicely done on the pirouette. And just a small hop forward. Again, Coach Llewellyn said their goal this week is to go after the landings, go after the handstands in a way that may mean if they're too aggressive, they may fall over on the handstand, they may, you know, step forward on the landing, but it's those details oh, yeah. that Huskies really have to rein in to start getting up to the high 196s. Back to back 985s to start, and here comes McKenna Smith. McKenna Smith, the freshman from Albuquerque, who's had an impressive start. All three of her vaults, 9.85 or better. And that vault looks a little different. The Omelian chick, half on pike front, is very challenging. There's a lot happening in the short span. She has to do the half turn in the right time before she reaches the table to get the block that she needs. Check out her height on that. Height and distance are the combination that the judge is looking for. Last week she nailed it. She's had that slight hop forward today. She had a 995 at Oklahoma last week and a 99 earlier this season against LSU. She's not getting enough attention yet, but she will. Candidate for freshman of the year already. So while Utah starts with back-to-back 985s, -back Washington just a step back at 980s. Good start for the Jim Dogs and Olivia Oppegard in the three spot. She also will start with the big Jaeger release move like you saw from Taylor Russin. The height that she gets here is pretty exceptional. Wow, and the distance was almost a little scary. She caught with really straight arms, but it means that both of those handstands on the high bar and on the bail release move to low were quite on top of the bar. Judges will take a slight deduction. And again, the step forward on the landing. She was just going a little too hard for the stick, wasn't rotated enough. 
Here's her Jaeger. It's a front flip in a straddle position. You want to be both high and far enough for the bar, but you catch with straight arms. She was almost a little too far and caught on the fingertips. Next up. 985, 985, and a 99 for McKenna Smith. And here comes Jaden Rucker, the defending NCAA champion on this event. She'll also do the Yurchenko one and a half forward landing. Just a great block. That you can hear the table when you get the right block. You can really hear it. The crowd is really loud, but you could still sense that it was there. Doesn't quite find the landing in the step forward. She's got 9875 three times already this year, including a career high 9975 last week at Oklahoma. Cody Llewellyn coaches the bars. Some last minute instructions for Brenna Brooks. Brooks at 9775 against UCLA. Second trip for Washington to Salt Lake City this year. They were in the Wasatch Classic a couple of weeks ago, and Brenna had a great bars routine with 985. This is a different looking bar routine. That Shapashnikova to clear hip is really challenging. She has tiny leg separations that the judges can see from the side. We'll see her blindfold to double tuck is right within the 20 degree mark. And unfortunately, another hot forward. Huskies yet to find their landings on bars thus far. You and I were talking before the meet. We did the UCLA Washington meet last week. They had had two great weeks to start. They were a little tight at home. Yeah, a little tight. Oh, Jen yeah. said they almost you know, were wrapped up in the atmosphere and the crowd in the home gym. So she's excited that they were in front of 5,400 fans, so it set them up well to be in front of the, what, probably 12K we have here today. Grace McCallum, this is a 10 hour start value. And this is a new vault for Grace. That's just her fourth time competing it. Coach Jimmy Pratt, the vault coach right there, taught her a one and a half in the off season because Grace asked to. She wanted to do this one and a half. She's competed a myriad of other difficult vaults in club, but thought that she had the best scoring potential on this one and a half. So just not quite the block. And you see she's off to the right on that line. The judges want you in the dead middle. That means that your whole performance is straight down the runway. Three nine eights and a nine seven. Remember, six compete, you only have to count five scores. So right now they're working on straight nine eights. And this is Lily Tubbs. Tubbs freshman from Texas. Wow, when her toes are pointed, you can see it. They are gorgeous and shown off on this event. Shy on that handstand, but watch her technique on this double layout dismount. Winds up, and again, just too much. On the heels. On the heels. Didn't really absorb that landing, but again, Coach Lone was okay with them being too aggressive, going for the landings, but Husky's giving away a lot of valuable tents with those steps. 985 from Cal, so they already have five good scores. So now a bit of a decision here for Jillian Hoffman. She's been working on a, on a one and a half. This would be her debut. Do you think she's going to go for it? It was based on whether the, the girls in front of her nailed their lineup, which I think they did. So she's playing with house money. Go for it. And she does. Yeah. Six balls. She did. Wow. Look at Ford in the background. I talked to Tom Rich for the meet. I said, all right, if you have five scores, can you tell her we don't need it? And he looked at me and smiled. And I said, oh, yeah, you're the Rupert Bowl gambler. You push the chips and say, go for it. What a debut for that ball. All-rounder, highly talented Skyler Killa Wilhelm. Skyler has the details down on this event that I talked about. Toe 
point, straight arms, handstands. We'll see, though, she can be the first gym doctor today to stick the landing on this double tap. And just a tiny step. Like you going to count it? Count the step? I'm going to count the step because the judge <laughs> yep. was sitting right there. Yeah, there was a little bump. I'll agree with you. Just a tiny little slide to the left foot. It's like they're just not quite confident in Jeez. those landings. She's always 9.8 or better at 9.825 against CCLA has gone as high as 9.875. What a great moment to start the day. Jillian Hoffman debuting the one and a half and sticking it in front of 12,000 at the Huntsman.